welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a full review on the new Laura Mercier Silk Cream Moisturizing Photo Edition Foundation. A bunch of you guys requested this, so I've been trying it out for a couple days, and you really, really like the in-depth review after trying it out for a couple days, so I've decided to stick to that for the next few foundation reviews. And as always, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can just click that subscription button down there, as well as give this video a big thumbs up up. You can do that right now if you haven't done so already. It really, really helps me out. Let's get started into my thoughts on the new Laura Mercier Silk Cream Photo Edition Moisturizing Foundation. I'm sure many of you guys know that Laura Mercier had a cult favorite, the Silk Cream Foundation, a full coverage foundation. Tons of people on YouTube loved it, but they did reformulate it and they separated it between hydrating and then oil-free. So the hydrating version, which is the one I have, is more geared to normal to dry skin, and then the oil-free version is geared towards normal to oily skin. Typically, I would have bought the normal to oily skin, but my skin has really changed in the last year and has become incredibly dry and really needing that extra hydration, but I also get oily on my T-zone. So it's very, very difficult for me right now to find a foundation that can do all I need it to do. I'm going to be reviewing the normal to dry skin, which is the moisturizing version, because that is what I am geared towards. So that's the two basic things. The other thing is, just like the Silk Cream Foundation, which I actually never tried when it was out, this one doesn't have any SPF in it, which is great for photo shoots, filming, events, anything like that. This is supposed to provide 12 hour wear, so it's a long wearing foundation. It's intensely pigmented to offer full coverage, and I really think it does a really great job at medium to full coverage. I love how it is able to get rid of any redness, any discoloration, any unevenness on my skin. It really makes my skin look really, really nice. I'm wearing it today. I've been loving this full coverage version because it doesn't feel full coverage and it doesn't look full coverage on me. It looks very natural, but covered. You're even going to be able to cover up some of the lighter freckles you might have. I have lighter freckles. I have lighter sunspots. This fully covers all of that. And I go in with the sponge, my beauty blender, and I get to cover up all of the redness around my nose. I also had some redness on my cheeks today and that covered it up pr pretty well. I also have some scarring around on the sides of my um, temples and that was even really easily covered by going over again. So what I basically do is I use a little small dime size amount and I use a damp beauty blender. I bounce the beauty blender into the product and I focus on the center of my face. I blend it out down my neck and then I'll go back in with a little more product and the pointy end of my beauty blender to really get the little scarring I have on my temples and around my nose, the redness, any of the major more discoloration that I tend to have around here. So in terms of coverage, this foundation is beautiful. In terms of longevity, it is also really, really good. I always set my foundation with powder. No matter what, I always set it with some sort of powder. Most recently, I've been using my Too Faced Primed and Poreless Powder that I talked about in one of my weekly favorites. It really provides a nice, poreless finish, but it also really sets all the color, all the product on my skin. I also live in Southern California, so it's quite hot. It's like 90 degrees during the day. And this foundation has lasted all day on me. I don't need much touching up. If anything, I'll go back over with my Primed and Poreless and just touch up my nose by blotting my nose. My nose always gets very shiny, but it's not ever overly shiny with this foundation. A lot of the times using a moisturizing foundation or product, my nose and T-zone just looks like a greasy, melting mess halfway through the day. This, for whatever reason, is moisturizing, it hydrates, it's really great with my dry, patchy chin area. It, it covers up that dry patchiness. It hydrates and brings life back to the dry areas, but it doesn't overhydrate my oily areas. It's not making me greasier. It's not making me oilier. If anything, it actually kind of controls it as well. I don't know how it does it, but it does it, and I really, really love it because of that. So overall, long-lasting, full coverage, covers beautifully. It looks like skin, which is so important because even if you're doing a full coverage foundation, you should always look like you. You should never look like you're wearing a pound of makeup. And this does that. Does it 
last a long time. I really think it does. It's lasted me from when I put on my makeup right after my workout in the morning all the way to the end of the night. If you have any dryness or if you're mature skin and you need a little bit more hydration, definitely pick up the moisturizing version. If you're younger, if you're acne prone, if you have very oily skin, definitely try out the oil free version. But I have not tried that one because it's not suited for my skin type, but I am so impressed with this one that I really think it would be great for you guys to try that one if you have that skin type. And leave me a comment, let each other know if you have oily skin and you've tried the oily skin version, how it works for you. Now I know you guys like it when I compare it to other foundations in my collection. So the ones that I have to compare it to the Laura Mercier one, the closest ones would be the NARS Sheer Glow and the Cover FX Natural Finish Oil Free Foundation. I have to say I'm loving the Laura Mercier one more than the Cover FX Natural Finish Oil Free one. The reason I'm saying I like this one more than the Cover FX one is because I feel like this one wears longer. This one, after eight hours, even though it's still there and it's still covering, because of my dry areas, it does start to break down around my chin and around my nose. Now, I'm not saying with more primer and using a setting spray and a powder that this isn't gonna happen with this, but this one, I do very little work. So if you're looking for longevity between the two, this one is way long, it's a lot longer lasting. So if you want something that is completely paraben free and fragrance free and good for sensitive skin, you might be more geared towards the Cover FX because they, they're a way cleaner brand. Laura Mercier did take out the parabens and some of the harmful chemicals within the Silk Cream Foundation, the original version, but I'm not quite sure exactly how much is still in there because in online it's not saying paraben free and fragrance free I don't smell anything there is no scent to this foundation so I really do believe it is fragrance free but I'm not quite sure if it's completely paraben free just yet because they haven't put that in there and also cover effects is gluten free as well now NARS sheer glow is an all-time favorite of mine it's not sheer and it's not glowy. It's a natural finish foundation. I think the description of the foundation and the name of it is a little bit deceiving. This is definitely buildable into a full coverage foundation for my uses. I don't have crazy issues that I need to cover, but it does a really good job at covering everything I would want to cover. And it's not sheer, it's not glowy either. It's a nice natural finish. So you're not gonna look matte, but you're not gonna look overly luminous. So I feel like these two are neck and neck. They both look great on camera, both photography and video. This is like an all time favorite of mine and this one is quickly becoming that. So these are both very, very similar. If you already own the NARS Sheer Glow and you have a bunch left, you can hold off on this, but if you're running out on this, you'll definitely like this one, I think. And the packaging is very, very nice. It's a squeezy bottle, which I always think is really interesting and fun because it's very hygienic, it, except it comes out. But it's very hygienic. It's very easy to use. Um, I just don't like how it air bubbles out a lot. And now it's all over my hand. It's, you can see the product. It's a traditional foundation texture, which is great for dry skin. A lot of these serum foundations, even though it's a serum foundation, it's not always the most suited formula of foundation for dry skin, which I am now experiencing for the first time in my life. So I really think if you've been trying to get your hands on a new foundation for dry skin, definitely try this out because it is so hydrating, it is such a natural finish, and it covers really, really well. It blends flawlessly, it looks beautiful. Do I love the foundation? If you don't know yet, yes. I absolutely love the foundation and I highly recommend it. I recommend it for anyone with normal skin all the way to dry skin. If you are combination oily, I would definitely try out the other version, the oil-free version, and see how that works for you. And I just love how it feels amazing on the skin. I don't feel like I'm wearing a pound of makeup. I don't feel like I'm wearing a full coverage foundation. And I love that there's no SPF or fragrance in it, which is probably why they renamed it to the photo edition because it is such a great product 
for people who need it for photography and videography. Maybe something you might want to even consider for your wedding day because it is so long lasting and it's hydrating. It's really, really a wonderful product and I'm very happy. Thank you guys for requesting this because I would have never purchased it if you didn't request it. Um, as always, don't forget to leave me a comment with any of your questions, but please check out the description box first. I'm a description box junkie. I fill that thing out with as much information as possible. So if I don't answer your questions in the description box, leave me a comment in the comment section. Tweet me, find me on Instagram, ask me on Snapchat. Those are the best ways to get a hold of me. And I always do my best in checking as frequently as possible. When I'm on the computer, I see your comments and I respond as soon as possible. Unless you don't let me, then I can't really do anything about it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please, please don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Check out my last video at the end card as well as all of my fun videos down below and popular videos if you haven't checked out all of those and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Hi guys! So I got a lot of requests on how I style my hair and I'm going to share with you guys what I've been doing since I've chopped it all off. I've been using my